Welcome, welcome everyone. And thank you, Cross Chain Coalition, as always, for the awesome tunes to get us pumped and ready to jump. Welcome everyone. Oh my God, what is going on here? Zeta Chain, what have you guys done? You have over flooded this AMA with like a hundred people. Cheek, whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The Zeta Chainers roll deep. Oh my goodness! I, you know, represent Zeta Chain community. Um, uh, give yourself a hand and a round of applause. Uh, we've had a lot of people come on this AMA, and Zeta Chain community is crushing it. Just simply letting everybody know this is a standard for a hot community. So congratulations, Zeta Chain community. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, everybody. Um, Cross-chain coalition community, don't worry. You're smaller. You, you, you got wasted last night in Lisbon, so <laughs> relax. The thank you to the cross-chain community uh, for making this happen. Everybody in the cross-chain coalition who supports cross-chain activity. And, of course, welcome to Future Proof. Today is Tuesday, Nov 1, 2022, as we enter in the last two months of the quarter, the last two months of the year, and the last two months of the launch of yet um, more awesome into the cross-chain coalition, and of course the cross-chain ecosystem. Um, and today we are super, super pumped and excited to have uh, the Zeta Chain, well, yeah, Zeta Chain community represent, uh, <laughs> the Zeta Chain community is here, uh, as well as our leads from Zeta Chain. So who's, who's with us today from Zeta Chain? You got... Jonathan, the head of community here, and um, we're working to get Brewmaster set up as a speaker here, our CTO. I think Copy he's that. Best yeah. Copy that. Yeah, there's no room. There's just simply no room because ZetaChain has taken over everything. Poor Brewmaster is like struggling here. So Jonathan, welcome um, and congratulations to your work and efforts uh, on again, uh, nurturing such an amazing community. Um, we are, we just can't wait to hear um, what's happening. Um, of course, everyone, if you're listening or if you're reading the blog or if you're watching the video and the YouTube snippets, uh, this is Future Proof with Zeta Chain. Uh, we're gonna talk to Zeta Chain a little bit about the you know history of Zeta Chain, um, the Web3 interoperability challenges. We're gonna go deep, so it might get boring because we're gonna get technical. Uh, we're gonna talk about cross-chain communication trends, looking at, and of course, we're gonna to talk about Zeta Chain's Alpha. What is the new paradigm for DAP development and UX? And of course, um, you know, how can, um, when token? <laughs> we always want to know. <laughs> Zeta Chain token is going to be hot. Um, so uh, with that, um, is Brewmaster still still getting his, uh, his, his Twitters up? Is he talking to Elon? You know, because um, this is Elon's platform now. So waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's see. All right, cool. I got Ponru on a Zoom here, so we're we're gonna manage to make this work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm loving it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there he is. All right. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't join the uh, Twitter space on browser and uh, mobile app for some reason. I have to go through this Zoom with Jonathan. <laughs> I hope my voice is <laughs> now, also, I tend to be loud. Um, folks are giving me feedback. I tend to be loud and over-enthusiastic. If at any point you guys have to cut me off while talking, please feel free to cut me off. Um, it's all good. I will also try to talk slower um, and try to be a little more cognizant, knowing that uh, we're doing this Zoom over Twitter spaces. So let's begin. Welcome, Zeta Chain. Tell us how this amazing community, an amazing protocol, get started. Introduce us to the Zeta Chain story. Yeah, I, I can uh, jump in here first. Um, I think it all starts with the the need for this kind of technology and better interoperability in the space. Um, for us, uh, the team behind Zeta Chain got together last summer, and basically, since the creation of Ethereum, we've all seen a lot of growth of alternative layer one blockchains out there. And it's pretty safe to say we're operating in this multi-chain environment, both users like you and me and everyone on this call, but also builders as well. And um, our founder and uh, Pan Ru, who's also with us, our CTO, noticed that there's no public blockchain out there with full interoperability and a sort of future-proof 
connectivity to all chains and layers. You have like various patchy solutions out there known as cross-chain bridges that will rot, wrap and lock tokens in a parking lot, if you will. And that's created all sorts of serious vectors of attack. And then uh, some of the other big L1s have um, software modules like the, the Polygon, Polygon Parachains or Cosmos IBC, and they promote pretty tight interoperability among chains that adopt those standards, but they're still limited because they don't connect with legacy chains like Bitcoin and devs have to adapt to those standards. And so basically the team at Zeta Chain was asking like, what if we could offer a truly um, chain agnostic blockchain that's public and decentralized and specifically one that extends Cosmos IBC and um, acts as a generic omni-chain smart contracts platform. And so um, Ponru is the big brain behind the, the white paper, and that's what his engineering team has been building. And we've shown off um, some of what the omni-chain interoperability protocol is capable of in the past 30, 60 days. And that's what has made us blown up to like 200,000 users on testnet. And um, we have some pretty exciting stuff coming. So I think the, the momentum is, is going to continue. Wow, 200,000 users on testnet. Congrats. Sorry, you were, you were, you were calling in Ponru there. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, um, I wanted to tap Ponru. Anything that you want to add around the story behind Zeta Chain and maybe how you got involved? Yeah, um, that, that was a pretty good uh, summary and introduction. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. By the way, um, if my uh, audio is not clear, please let me know. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add that um, I'm not exactly CEO, but uh, you know, we, 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 we do not exactly have a very large team, and I don't think we have a CEO right now, but uh, I think uh, I, I am behind some of those uh, early uh, designs and the overall uh, coordination of the tech side. So uh, just a little bit. That's awesome. So <laughs> thanks, Ponru, uh, and thanks, Jonathan. So to confirm, Zeta Chain is a Cosmos SDK chain um, with IBC. Uh, uh, for in communications in IBC enabled chains. And you want to be a truly, uh, you know, interoperable public blockchain that is also centralized. And so you mentioned legacy chains, but um, Bitcoin doesn't have IBC. So how would a Cosmos SDK chain with IBC communicate, say, to the Bitcoin blockchain in the Zeta chain world? Um, well, oh, I, I can answer that. So uh, we are trying to be, uh, we are Cosmos chain, but we are not exactly relying on IBC to uh, connect to other chains mm -hmm. uh, because not every blockchain supports IBC. IBC is sort of uh, like um, a uh, internet protocol, TCPIP, needs support on both sides. Yeah. So what we are trying to do uh, is that it to have the functionality of IBC uh, by re reaching out to those uh, other block foreign chains uh, or external chains in our uh, terminology. So we will actively monitor the uh, foreign chains and uh, we will interact with uh, foreign chains um, with some kind of uh, threshold signature scheme account or, uh, uh, or uh, model signal for validators. So what kind of signature scheme account, signature scheme are you using for these types of non-IBC cross-chain communications? So I think uh, the um, communication between blockchains, uh, we can categorize it into uh, two directions. First uh, is what we call incoming uh, message. Mm -hmm. uh, in, so the incoming message is something that uh, is a, some kind of events or transactions that are relevant to Zeta chain, uh, which are observed uh, by our observers. That will get reported to our blockchain and uh, it gets uh, verified there. 
either by um, counting votes of the uh, observers, so yep. obviously relying on the honest majority of them, yep. or and or by a slight client style verification of a Merkle group, let's say. And that's the coming part. The outgoing yep. part is uh, once something triggered. Uh, we would like to do something uh, not about change, right? So typically user want to uh, let's uh, talk about slightly general use case uh, on chain A. Some user wants to call some smart contract functions on chain B. Mm -hmm. So how do we facilitate that? So we'll observe. So so the user will leave a uh, specific event on um, chain A, which will be picked up by the chain. It will be parsed. And the message will be forwarded to the uh, destination chain, chain B. And uh, the Zeta chain will make a transaction on behalf of the user on chain A um, on chain B smart, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the smart contract user specified. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, obviously chain B needs to authenticate the message or the transaction mm -hmm. to um, Make sure that it actually comes from that chain. So, so we are using a a, a um, quite uh, recent and uh, complicated um, cryptography. Um, it's it's it's, it's some uh, kind of uh, threshold signature scheme for particularly for the two most popular, uh, two most commonly used signature schemes, ECDSA and EDDSA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's basically a. Uh, multi-party computer, secure multi-party computation uh, for those commonly used digital signatures. So we have a bunch of TSA signers, let's say, you know, 20 TSA signers, and uh, we have a defined a threshold, let's say two-thirds. So mm -hmm. any two-thirds, uh, so two-thirds of 20 is, I think, something around 14. So mm -hmm. any 14 of those TSA signers together, uh, they enter a uh, P-sign ceremony, Mm -hmm. They could generate a valid uh, signature. Mm -hmm. So the the signature seems to uh, you know it looks no different than any other uh, signature generated by a single private key. So uh, the the chain B could could authenticate a single TSS address. So that is uh, uh, without any you know smart contract capabilities. You, you know, Bitcoin blockchain can authenticate that because. To big Bitcoin network is just simply a uh, EC, ECDSA signature. Mm -hmm. So that's um, uh, that's pretty pretty amazing advancement over the last uh, I think four years. Uh, it was a very uh, uh, recent uh, advancement, and it got uh, uh, more and more mature and popular. So uh, mm -hmm. some projects use that as well. Those really uh, Thorchain use that, and um, Axila use that, and I think Alice. And any swap, and uh, nowadays uh, called multi multi chain, mm -hmm. also use it. <laughs> so to confirm, you're using threshold signatures uh, in order for you to create a signature scheme by which uh, a number of your signers will be able to create a valid and authentic signature that can be validated on the so on the target chain. And just to confirm, you said that you were a selection of of, of validators will be TSA. Did I get that right? So not every validator is a threshold signature signer only a select group of validators? Did I read that right, or was that incorrect on my part? It's correct that uh, only, uh, so, okay. So we have a somewhat uh, unconventional uh, architecture because we need to observe uh, external chains and also we need to do something on external chains. So we, uh, we are proof of stake uh, blockchain that means that you know the network consists of a bunch of mm -hmm. validators. Yeah. Uh, but in order to observe and uh, make outbound transactions, each mm -hmm. validator runs not only the uh, the node software for our own blockchain, it also runs uh, observers that observes the mm -hmm. external chain and also TSA signers yeah. that participate mm -hmm. in the uh, you know TSA sign key sign ceremony. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we have three roles. For validators, so we have the normal validator that is the same for every Cosmos chains, and we have yeah. observers, and we have the TSA signers. So those three roles are independent. They could be, you know, one validator could be, uh, you know, both a validator, a normal validator, an observer, and also a TSA signer, but it doesn't have to be. So okay. 
the reason is that uh, blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the Cosmos um, <clears throat> a blockchain has very mature uh, consensus for the um, the uh, block production, like mm -hmm. the uh, the normal blockchain stuff. Right? So you are propose yeah. or you uh, um, what's the word for it? I think perhaps uh, verify the box. Uh, and, and, and uh, uh, with the um, a PFT um, uh, consensus algorithm, but for observers and TSS signers, it's not as mature, and there are some uh, performance limitations for TSS. Mm -hmm. It gets very very fast in recent years because mm -hmm. uh, to the point that it's practical to use as a hot wallet, but still performance is not uh, up to the speed of a, a, a Ethereum uh, yeah consensus. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we divide the roles in uh, the, we divide those three roles so that uh, you know you don't have to be a observer or a TSS signer. Uh, you can be a normal validator so that that part of the network can scale uh, as well as any mm -hmm. uh, Cosmos pins. I think um, 100 validators or maybe mm -hmm. 300 validators. Mm -hmm. uh, observers uh, is special. Mm -hmm. um, TSS signers as well. Of it's also special. Do I have a special uh, customized incentives for uh, sort of uh, making sure that that behavior is correct and timely mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also demand a, a lot more uh, bond mm -hmm. for those more critical rules? Wait, so, so wait, wait, that wait, the, hold the on. The observer will be smaller than the normal validators. So, but they so still have question. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, before, <laughs> before we. Can you hear Tariq me? has a, a follow-up. Yeah, yeah. So just to confirm, make sure we, we understand because we, we covered a lot of ground there. Um, what you're saying is that you have three groups. You got the validators, um, essentially for block validation. You have observers for observing uh, transactions that happen across other networks. And you have TSA signers, which are the threshold signature signers um, that are a separate group from all three. And, and all three can be the same or all three can be distinct. And then lastly, you have a bonding requirement for each of these. You have bonding requirement for the validator and you have a separate bonding requirement for the observer and you had a third bonding requirement for uh, the threshold signature signer. Did I get that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> Got it, awesome. Okay, so, so the question I have now is um, in terms of the, the and, and how, and, and in terms of incentives for being observer and for being threshold signer, uh, those separate incentives from being a validator and a block producer, and how does data chain incentivize uh, signers as well as observers? Um, so, um, yeah, so we have extra uh, incentives for uh, observers and data signers, and um, those will come from a different uh, portion of the pools. So normal validators will, will get their block rewards from a uh, given pool that has a certain percentage of the total supply. So uh, the Zena token uh, has a fixed supply. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, observer that gives signers, they, they'll have a, a separate pool for that. So we're still working on the you know, details. But that seems to be the direction that we're going. Okay, so there's a separate token for observers and for signers than there is for validators, right? Oh, I'm sorry, the same token, but different pool, uh, reserved pool of tokens. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, okay, good. We're gonna have um, more documentation come out to the public on yep. uh, token utility stuff. Yep, 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 excellent, excellent. All right, so great, great work here, very, very cool. Now, um, you have 200,000 users on your testnet. Uh, tell us more about the testnet. What's happening? What are people doing on the testnet? What has been really uh, an amazing win for you guys in terms of folks? And when you say testnet, um, are you testnet chain to other testnets or your testnet cross chain to mainnets? Uh, quote, unquote, not like the those at the ZK Sync who were launching mainnet, <laughs> but it was just a testnet to a mainnet. We don't do that here. We're honest, folks. Um, what? Tell us more about what makes up the activity of this 200,000 users on your testnet. Yeah, I can uh, give a high level overview. So um, we released the testnet actually around 
April time, but only about 90 days ago did Zeta Chain release the first test uh, DAP. Um, and, and that's a, a native asset cross-chain swap. And what we wanted to do is demonstrate that users now have the ability to achieve any to any token or chain trades without wrapping or locking tokens. And we have a number of supported test nets. It's all on test net. Um, and so um, users are able to do a, a few different actions um, to earn Zeta points, which yeah. is a sort of gamification um, yeah, reward nice. system in the app, um, which has been really successful in helping bring in new users and educating them on this new primitive. So they're earning points by doing daily swapping and testing the protocol. Uh, you can earn points providing feedback in Discord on the UI and just general experience and bugs. And you can also, through an in-app referral mechanism, invite friends with a unique code. Um, and so as we build new features, there, there will be new ways to earn points. Um, one of the cool things we did, we announced a, a strategic partnership with um, Project Galaxy. They're, they rebranded as Galaxy, one of the big on-chain credentialing protocols. That was about a, a week ago. Um, they're going to be building omni-chain identity smart contracts on Zeta Chain. Um, in any case, we brought this uh, testnet app um, and sort of built an NFT campaign around it on their platform. Yeah, and so, awesome. yeah, users, um, by swapping and exploring functionality in our protocol, can earn um, real NFTs, and, mm -hmm. and that is tied to Discord roles. And so um, the idea is that it's more engaging and fun. It also helps us get a sense of... Um, who's contributing and uh, using the protocol and helps us track that. Yeah. I saw a press release that um, Zeta Chain was also having a partnership with blockchain.com. <laughs> is that so is it has that or test, connected to testnets, not, not to main? Yeah. Yes. That's no, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well done. So, yeah. so I, and as I, far I, as your comment, um, yeah. Tariq, um, you'll have to send me where, where you might have, might have seen that. Um, we have a number of partners and teams that we're working with to make sure that when we launch, we're covering some of the really important omni-chain use cases and DeFi right. and right. omni-chain identity with right. Galaxy, DAO tooling, um, and we're we're looking for more. So please okay. reach yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Quick, quick question. Let me think, when we think of cross-chain communications, right, and what you guys have learned from your test net um, and where cross-chain communications is going. What's the main number one difference that you're seeing? So currently we, we you know, we've had folks from layer zero here. We've had folks from Axelar. Um, you know, we're going to have folks from Nomad. A lot of these great folks have talked about their different visions of where cross-chain communication is going. You guys have been very successful with your test net um, and you, you now have your swap app where else do you you know where do you see the, the 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 sort of the trend the number one trend for you in the zeta chain world where do you see these cross-chain communications really driving the most demand and the most value um jonathan uh you want me to uh, say a few words about the tech Sure, yeah. If, if you could talk about the benefit, perhaps, of Zeta Chain's cross-messaging yeah. approach and, and what's coming around omni-chain smart contracts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be... Okay, so I will yeah. see uh, use cases and uh, stuff like that to you uh, to a little bit later. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the, uh, the cross-chain uh, tech side, the, you know, the... Uh, the Sort of my vision for where it is going for the chain and what it enables, and then uh, you know the applications could be uh, <clears throat> uh, limited. So I think if we have two systems of doing cross chain. Um, uh, let's call it cross chain communication. 
One is the message passing style, very similar to layer zero, and uh, perhaps I, you know, I'm not sure about that. Um, the functionality is the same, the uh, implementation, the security profile, all those kinds of things may be different, but the functionality is the same. So basically, we're just a bit, uh, forwarding a message from chain A to chain B. <clears throat> and that's very useful, and you can use that message passing to uh, build some incredible uh, applications. Yeah. But uh, we have a second system in development. Uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but uh, it's, we haven't come up with a good name, but uh, right now we call it Omni Chain Smart Contract. So basically, imagine a smart contract on the chain um, that can manage assets on um, external chains, native assets. So it's almost like a very smart contract, but it can hold native BTC. That's, that's, uh, and, and all, all kinds of any uh, other assets, NFTs or whatever that a normal um, smart contract can hold on different chains. So, and then you can program it like a, a um, <coughs> Uh, to manage those assets, uh, just uh, just like in a single blockchain. So that's will um, open a door to uh, more complicated applications, and uh, perhaps more uh, the compli uh, applications that cannot that does not exist or yeah. is not feasible on on passing. So for yeah, example, just... you want to have a let me give you an example. So <clears throat> with Omnichain smart contract, you can have a curve pool of uh, I don't know, just to throw in a random uh, uh, idea uh, of uh, USDT on Ethereum and B mm -hmm. B BUSD on Binance Smart Chain mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Bitcoin on Bitcoin. Let, let, let's just, uh, just throw random ideas here uh, with three assets in a single pool, right? So it's possible to do that with message passing, but then it's uh, very complicated. And you have to implement curve with message passing, because there's going to be a lot of back and forth that you have to maintain the state, uh, sort of the same machine style, uh, event driven style. And that's much harder to do than uh, a curve. Curve is already mm -hmm. quite complicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's over for an uh, invariant equation. Uh, but with uh, Omni Chain Smart Contract, we have a demo for that. And, and I think it's coming uh, in our next version of Testnet. It's nice. very simple to do. And uh, basically, we can just uh, deploy the curve contract yeah. and add some wrapper to it. And then suddenly it becomes a cross chain that allows you to, um, you know, pull. And, and quick question will, will I be? This is awesome. And congrats on the Omnichain smart contract model. I just want to jump in with a quick question. As a developer, will I write the Omnichain smart contract in Solidity on Zeta Chain? So is Zeta Chain able to allow me to write Solidity, or will I have to write something like Cosmosm as? Most other Cosmos chains require me to write to send commands or, or write a, a custom Go module for this. Uh, solid, solidity. You write. Got it. So you are having an EVM run on Zeta chain, so I could write Solidity to control, say, the deployed curve contract on chain A and the deployed asset on chain B. Yeah. Not really. So you deploy a curve contract. That is on Zeta chain. Yeah, that contract is on Zeta chain. However, ah, right, 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 right. So Those this is a contract is on Zeta chain. On Zeta okay. Chain. But okay, but for cross so chain, you don't, you don't have to write contract. You know, you have the 10, 10, uh, 10 blockchains. You don't like write contract and deploy on ten different chains. You only do that on a single chain. That is Zeta chain. Got it. So just to reflect, make sure I got it correct. I will write my omni-chain smart contract on Zeta chain. I will write it in Solidity because Zeta chain runs an EVM compiler on Cosmos. Is that correct? Uh, we have an EVM virtual machine on Cosmos. Yes, that's uh, similar to it's called Ethereum, but with some uh, got it. To accommodate awesome. our product. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So you guys are so you guys using um, your version of Ethermint on Zeta chain, which I think is genius. So well done. And then I write Solidity, it runs on Zeta chain. And how does that, so how does my Omni contract now interact with the with any other state on other target chains? It does or it does not? It does, it does. So right now, uh, it's not as flexible as message passing, 
Yeah. So right now, uh, we're talking about next iteration of uh, of testnet is going to support yeah. uh, any fungible token. Right? So I think uh, Ether, Solana, this BDC, those kind of things, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that is managed by uh, together by the Zeta EVM uh, uh, virtual machine and uh, the fungible module that is a custom um, yeah. module for Cosmos. And later we can add support for the state NFT and things like that to gradually expand the things those uh, native omni-chain smart contract can manage on external yep. chain. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. So, so Zeta Chain becomes the center of essentially omni-chain computing in a way that you can't get on other chains today. That That is a unique selling proposition. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. All right. Yeah. I, I don't think any other people are doing that. Actually, uh, we might be the only people doing this. Kind yeah, of no, I think it's very cool. Um, I, and I think it's a, very well I think. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and, and very well done. I would love to see this technology come to life. Okay, I know we're over time, um, and so we've had a really deep one. Let's Last question before we jump. How do folks get involved with Zeta Chain? What's the call to action? Do we come to the Discord, uh, Twitter? How do we join the Zeta Chain community? Yeah, come to all the, the typical channels and make sure you join Zeta Labs, our testnet environment, so you can experience what we're talking about and get really excited about what's coming soon. Um, Ponru um, sort of gave a, a foreshadowing there of what's coming. Um, and we're trying to go all over the world. We're in uh, Belarus today. We're in San Francisco on Friday. We have team members in Nigeria on Friday as well. Tokyo, Taipei. We want to come meet you. We want you to host events on behalf of Zeta Chain. Um, so get involved in the test net and um, get involved in, in Discord and jump in the conversation. And uh, that, that would be the CTA. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Great. It is a worthy CTA. I want to say thank you, of course, uh, Jonathan. Thank you, Ponru. Thank you, Zeta Chain community. Uh, this has been an amazing chat. Uh, the big alpha here is that you can write Solidity that will run on Zeta Chain and in their Omnichain smart contract so that you will be able to essentially use Solidity as an EVM on top of Zeta Chain as they continue to expand their cross-chain communications. That's huge. Um, that makes it very, very easy for developers to bring one contract um, that can get control and, and, and be essentially truly omni-contract. Congrats on that. Uh, and folks should get involved with Zeta Chain, see what it's about, and uh, let's continue to build this cross-chain ecosystem.